get it. There we go. Oh, wow. This, these headphones really do block out my voice. <laughs> I no longer know if I'm being loud or not. Let's just tilt this up a smidge. I don't need my mouse and keyboard today. I'm going to be playing via a joypad, so that's all good. Let's turn that on. Hello. What the hell are we doing? Hope you're having an excellent, excellent Friday. Um, it's been it's been a long week. I'm not gonna lie. It's been it's been a, a long, rough week. Um, and I thought we'd end the week out with some uh, lo-fi gaming. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to play some lo-fi gaming uh, in regards to... In regards to... Fucking hell. That sounds like a corporate email. We're going to play some Gris. I don't know if anybody's ever played Gris before, but we're going to play some Gris. I played it a little while ago on Switch. Um, it's a really nice game. It's, it it uh, goes along the lines of... Um, parental loss which can be a bit of a hard subject so what a girl loses her mother and goes through the five stages of grief and um, those five stages are stages of the game so we're gonna go through that we're gonna go through it together as well let me just double check my settings um, stream general stream video yeah that's fine that's all good so we're going to do a, I'm going to load the game up and we're going to do an intro and then we're going to dive straight into it. So let's get the game up, play, let's stop that music. I've got buttons for things now, that's quite, it's quite nice, it's quite a nice touch. And let's see, firstly, if this will go onto the right screen, which it has not. There we go. Oh, my retinas. Ah! <laughs> Devolver Digital. Is this the right microphone? Audio. Yeah, that's the right microphone. There we go, that might be a bit better. Okay. Testing, testing. This is the sound of my voice. Yeah. Yeah, I can turn that up a smidge. Nice lovely stuff so now i should be able to use yeah i can use my joypad fantastic yeah that all sounds good all right sweet i'm gonna turn it down a little bit we're gonna do an intro for youtube uh for the lo-fi gaming channel and then we're gonna dive straight in so look what yeah what i know about this game is it's it basically deals with parental loss um and you go through the five stages of grief during the game uh, so, I can't remember what they are, actually. Let me just... This is the fun thing about being part of the Twitch community, is that you uh, you get to see me just fluff around like this. Come on. Come on. Five stages of grief. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Excellent stuff. <clears throat> All right, let's do an intro. How do I? Oh god, I look like a T-Rex. <laughs> Lower lows. <laughs> I like this. I like Mr. Burns. <laughs> serious, serious YouTube face now. Hey everyone, and welcome to Lo-Fi Gaming, probably the chillest place on the internet to find gameplay footage. So today we're going to be playing Gris. I'm going to do that again because I didn't mean to use the word footage. I'll snip that bit out, hopefully. Hey everyone, and welcome to Lo-Fi Gaming, probably the chillest place on the internet to find gameplay. Today we're going to be playing Gris, which touches on a few different bits and pieces. Oh, fuck. Fuck! Sources, chat. Where's chat? Boop. Oh, my chat's not working. What is going on? Yeah, Kiwi Chris, basically. <laughs> chat. What is going? What is happening? This is fun, isn't it? Why do not work? Uh, well, apparently it does work. Apparently it's there. It's just not... Let me just spam a message a second. Boop. No, not appearing. 
I'm also pairing on the screen here. Uh, how do copy paste with Windows? There we go. I'm so used to Mac. My God. Let's go browser. Let's go. With it. Oh no, this and then 1920 by. Nope, that's my caps lock. Glad that's on though. 1080. Now, test. Did that work? Hey, that did work. Fantastic. Grass, put your beer. Look at all. Right, okay. Now, if I seen away from that and then seen back, or not, as the case may be. That's all. Oh, it, oh, fucking hell, Mike. Jesus. It's because I hid it. I didn't need. I didn't need to do that at all. It's right there. It's right there. It's what I needed to do. This is good. Good times, isn't it? This is this is good times that you get to see me changing. Ah, this is this is what you sign up for. <laughs> Let's be honest. This is uh, this is the bits that never make the edit. Uh, streaming tools overlays so if this is what happens when i change my chat settings and i don't save them properly so settings don't show messages permanently messages fade after 10 seconds got it right, let's try this shall we let's pop that in chat yeah that looks better let's stick that out there a little bit cool 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 but yeah uh there's a yeah i'm gonna do an intro and then we'll, we'll redo the intro we'll take it from the top and then we'll start playing this Boop. and this is a perfect opportunity if you do want to put a message on there for your future self or youtube or me in general when i'm editing because i do see them um that and i don't see them when i'm streaming then this is the perfect opportunity to do that so Feel free. Hey everyone, and welcome to Lo-Fi Gaming, probably the chillest place on the internet to find gameplay. Today, we're going to be going through Gris, which is a touching story of a young girl who loses her mother and journeys through the five different stages of grief. She journeys through... I'll cut that space out. <laughs> Denial anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. All five stages are represented with different characteristics through the game. Now, it is a bit of a touching story, and there is one section that is a little bit, um, shall we say, perilous. But other than that, it's a pretty chill game, which is why I wanted to feature it on Lo-Fi Gaming. But without further ado, if you're interested, if you like what you see, please hit the like button. If you don't like it, please hit the dislike button. Uh, subscribing does help and it's absolutely free and it really helps the channel out. But otherwise, we're going to hop straight in. Right, one more time, because these sorts of videos, I didn't like the idea of having, please subscribe because it's really nice. So originally that was against what I wanted to do, so. I'm editing as I go, people. I'm editing as I go. <laughs> God, it's fucking million degrees in this room. It's not working again. You fuck. Show me. Show me. There we go. Good. Oh, stop doing that. <laughs> we'll get some gameplay eventually. Promise. Good job I'm here for a few hours. Hey everyone, and welcome to Lo-Fi Gaming. Probably the chillest place on the internet to find gameplay. Now, this game is called Gris, and today we're going to be going through the five stages of grief, which can be a bit of a tumultuous time um, for anyone who suffered them, but this game goes through those stages in quite a unique way with quite some, some quite, uh, fuck it, say quite more. Fuck! I'll get this right one day. God, can you imagine how difficult this is for me when I'm not live? when I'm actually just recording this.
Hello and welcome to Lo-Fi Gaming. Today we're going to be playing a game called Gris. Um, basically we're going to be going through the five stages of grief, uh, represented through different levels when a young girl loses her mother. Now there is one part of this game, I've played through it already, there is one part of this game that's a little bit perilous, but otherwise it's a very relaxing experience with some beautiful visuals and absolutely gorgeous music. And I wanted to share it with you, so let's hop in. Fucking nailed it. <laughs> right. New game. Let's go. Let's go, go, go. No. We're in a giant stone hand. God, the art in this is gorgeous. It's a really nice intro. <laughs> it's genuinely a, a pretty beautiful intro. You know, once I now I've played this, and I sort of I know a bit more about the game because I, I I knew a bit about it, but I didn't realize when I first played it that it was going to go through the stages of grief. And I I now kind of understand a bit better. Oh, this is us. I now kind of understand a bit better some of the um, like some of the analogous uh, metaphors that they use. So that, for example, if you've if you've been struck by grief, that it does feel like everything falls out from underneath you. So that's that, I kind of I see that better now than I did when I first played it. I just thought it was a a, a a good intro and a cool intro and a sexy intro, but still a, just a, an intro. And now I just realize actually this is the devastating loss that has happened to this person. All right, let's go. Can we jump? We can jump. Can we do anything else? Not yet, anyway. Funky looking trees. We're climbing a giant rock. <laughs> that, that's weirdly peaceful. Thank you. 
So the first time I played this, I played this on Switch, and I can tell you it's a very different game, or feels like a very different game on a full screen monitor. It's gorgeous. I mean, it, it, don't get me wrong, it's, it's a good looking game on Switch as well, but on this... Whew. Very strong rumble. It's a star. Or oh, it appears to be a star anyway. It's Navi from The Legend of Zelda. Hey, listen. <laughs> I wonder if there's something up here. Secrets. There's a secret something. There's a small walking block. Oh, I can't get up there. I can't get up there yet. It's the important thing. Oh, I can get up here though. Can I get in here? Yes, I can. Let's get another star. Multiple stars. Maybe that one up there. But I can't get that. Oh, I wonder if I can drop down and get that, that shiny thing. I 100% could have gotten there. Oh, so I have enough. I wonder if I could have ridden the back of that creature. So this happens if you have enough stars. So I have two stars that's made that bridge, basically. And now I have a third, which is hopefully going to make the other bridge. Whoops. That's because I was looking at the volume levels and wondering if all the volume is okay. <laughs> So now if I go down here, I can get this. I know it. That noise, that noise must be in game. I keep hearing a weird crinkly noise. I think it's in game. Thank you, Kiwi Chris. Thanks for letting me know that the volume seems good. And don't forget as well, if anybody knows of any games similar to this, um, not doesn't have to be identical, doesn't have to touch on any um, trauma related issues or anything like that, but relaxing games, because they can come in all shapes and sizes. I know some people have recommended things like Power Washing Simulator, to Garden Simulator, to Stardew Valley, to lots of lots and lots of different um, recommendations over on the Discord. Uh, and in, oh, it's the broken hand. Um, and in chat as well during different uh, different streams. But if you have a comfort game, what's your what's your comfort game? Turned red. A color has been brought back. It's a really nice slide in for a notification. Like <laughs> I'm taking I'm taking uh, UX UI advice from video games. Your comfort game is extremely advanced Sudoku. I mean, that's that's fair. It's whatever, whatever you think of as a comfort game, really, isn't it? Do I not want to fall down there? Fuck you. No, I'm not. I don't know 
what my true comfort game is. Right, so this needs two something. Is there a game I play all the time? Uh, I'll admit, right now, probably Cozy Grove. Because I've been playing that game on and off on my Switch for about 13, 14 months now, just over a year. How many do I need? And I've, I've basically finished it, but I've not finished it, if that makes sense. I've not crossed the line of getting the end credits and trying to get all of the little high score, high achievements and all that sort of stuff. And it's 100% it's on, uh, on the list of things to play on this channel. Oh, I never, I never realized that. Bonk. Hmm, so this requires something else as well. I also didn't realise that there were multiple endings to this game when I first played it. I just thought it was a one ending game. And then I realised there were these things called mementos sort of floating around the game. And I'd done a, I think, a pretty decent job of... Um, can I walk on that? A pretty decent job of collecting them. No, I can't. <laughs> So where do, wait, where do we go? But I'd, obviously I'd missed some because it was my first time playing it through. But I'd, uh, hmm, interesting. Oh, maybe I can go right to the bottom. Um, yeah, I'd uh, obviously missed a few during my first playthrough. But I was very intrigued to know what the sort of the, the ending ending, or the true ending, so to speak. So that's that way. Wait, wait, hang on a minute. What's this way first? I thought that was a slide. Then, oh no, I don't want to drop down there. And I am one of those people that if you if you tell me to go left or right, and the expectation is to go left, I'll go right first. <laughs> it's a giant turtle. Can't get up there yet. Now it's a giant slide. Suddenly it's Alto's adventure. I guess this is a good metaphor for feeling, you know, out of control of a situation. You know, it's out of your hands. You are kind of just along for the ride, you know. You don't... If something bad happens and you don't really have a... You don't really have a choice in what you do, you know? You just kind of have to not live, just live with it. I'm not saying live with it, but it's a... Uh, you're kind of on board, you know? You just have to kind of ride it out. <laughs> My left going instinct served me well in Hollow Knight, not other places I've got. Hollow Knight was one of my Christmas games, and I say that at, the, at, at Christmas time, there's always a game I choose. So we, we'll take some time off over the Christmas period, and I will pick a game to play, just just rinse it basically. And it's normally not a long game, but it's normally a you know not a, just a couple of hours worth of a game. And I think it was not last year, but the year before, that was Hollow Knight, and my God, that really. That really touched me. I really, really enjoyed Hollow Knight. Like, way more than I thought I would. I thought I'd enjoy it. I didn't think I'd fall for it quite as hard as I did. You are going to have to excuse me. I need to answer a phone call. Well, don't don't hang up.
Ah, right, sorry about that. So, long story short, which probably won't make the YouTube cut, uh, long story short, I am waiting for a phone call off my GP about my medication. And that I, I rang them this morning and said, look, my medication's running out and I can't order it through the app anymore. They're like, no, you need a medication review. I was like, okay, cool. How can I do one of those? And they're like, okay, we'll get a doctor to ring you. And they rang me, they rang me once today, when which is the only time I walked away from my phone, typical. Uh, and I saw it ringing um, for a second there while the intro was playing. And I picked it up. I said, apologies to yourselves. And then slid the phone and it, it they hung up. So I'm like, okay. Now I'm just going to have to wait to see if uh, they ring back, basically. Which is unfortunate, I won't lie. Okay, well, we'll wait and see. It's one of the reasons why, unfortunately, it's on loud. So if you hear it, I apologize for this. Uh, Alright, let's continue. Uh, resume. Uh, Hollow Knight got me through some, got me through freshman year before I discovered the joy of puzzles above my pay grade. <laughs> can I go left instead of right? Let's have a look. I absolutely can. <gasps> it's another memento. <laughs> it's said that the NHS is perhaps the greatest program ever devised, except that it's run by the British. I, I got it. I love. I do love the NHS, but yes, it does. It does kind of feel like a, uh, a bit of a, um, what's the a bit of a civil service sometimes which yeah, it is but it just I'm very grateful for it but use interacting with it is a bit of a nightmare so like it obviously depends on what doctor you've got but my doctor if you have if you want an appointment with them you have to ring them at eight o'clock in the morning ten past eight too late ten to eight they're not open eight o'clock in the morning hope you get through oh there's a wind isn't there Run, 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 run. Yeah, you have to uh, ring them at exactly 8 o'clock. Hope they have an appointment. If they do, then they'll book you in. If they don't, they won't, basically. They'll they'll just say, you know, we can't book you in yet. Uh, oh, I've, I've missed it. Oh, no. Oh, I have missed it. Ah, no. Oh, that's actually not as bad as I thought. Not as bad as I remember, actually. Hello, tiny creature. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm very grateful that we have the NHS. But I don't know, sometimes I'm just like, I'd rather not faff around going to the doctor. I'd rather... I'm quite fortunate, though, because I've got um, private medical with my work, so... If we have a problem, we actually just have an app where we can we can book an appointment with a doctor to have like a FaceTime consultation with them, which is pretty decent. As the way I got diagnosed with my back problems, to be honest with you, if I'd have gone through NHS, I think I'd have either been, I would have either been misdiagnosed or I would have still been waiting for a diagnosis. Run, 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 run. Run and slide, run and slide. Wee, wee. Now, can we make it to whatever shelter we need before the storm comes? I never really noticed these. Um... Oh, that's cool. This one doesn't blow because the wind doesn't get in here. <laughs> I never realized that before. Oh, oh, okay. So I'm missing a, I'm missing a star. Got it. I think I have one star with me. Oh, is there one star in here? Maybe. Hmm. 
you never hear much about private healthcare outside of the US, apart from Germany. Uh, well, that's fair enough. Um, I don't really hear a lot about any other... I mean, I hear bad stuff about US healthcare, but I think it's... Um, if you have private medical covered by a company in the UK, then they, they pay for the cover, and then you... So many things are included in that cover, and uh, then you don't need to pay, basically. Um, so, like, a lot of treatment stuff is uh, covered under the private medical uh, that we have. But things like dental and eyes aren't. So, your teeth in your eyes, I think because they're cosmetic or technically cosmetic, um, you, you have to pay for those sort of things yourself. It looks like... Oh, it's got legs. Oh, I forgot about this. Let's go up here. I would... I would quite like that memento. Up, 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 up. There we go. Got it. Um, don't think there's anything down below. I think there might be a gust of wind coming. I'm safe here, right? I. Yeah, safe enough. Safe enough. I guess this is probably the first lo-fi gaming video that will go on the new channel. So that's exciting. Um, so I've done lo-fi gaming videos before. Oh, hello. Oh. I need a, I need a something. Oh no, I'm going to get blown away. Ah, I'm going to get blown to the corner. Um, yeah, so it's, it's exciting that that's... Uh, that's the thing. It's, it's a new. It's a new channel. It's a new stream of content. It's a new. It's a new stream of my passion, which is really nice. Um, so I guess it would be quite nice to give you a bit of context in regards to what lo-fi gaming is, what lo-fi gaming isn't, and sort of what I want from it. Really. Oh no, I didn't make it. Ah, because I was under the thing. I mean, if you're on Twitch at the moment and you want to find out more about the different shows, you've got the different commands that you can use. Um, I think Sarge, S-A-A-J, for the horror stream, screaming at a joypad. Um, you've got Lo-Fi for the Lo-Fi gaming streams. You've got Retro for the retro gaming streams. Um, oh, hello. I can turn into a block. That means I can go back and break that block. I wonder what iconography what sort of metaphorical symbol this is being like st like stubborn maybe what's this is this denial i can't remember yeah this is denial so my guess is this is like being very stubborn and de denying that you you know the thing has happened which is weird because i d i guess when a bad thing happened to me, I didn't really... I don't know if I had that. I didn't really go through the, the, the main stages of grief because I didn't really have, I guess, the opportunity to, which is a, converse, a deeper conversation between me and my therapist, but... Slam. There we go. Feels like denial. It does feel like denial, doesn't it? He's like, nope. That's not happening. Nope. So, yeah. So what I was saying was uh, what lo-fi gaming is and what lo-fi gaming isn't really. So I would say probably in 2019, before the COVID times, um, maybe late 2018, early 2019, uh, I was looking for, I was working in an office and I was looking for, oh, I can walk as well, probably. Um, to be fair, most psychologists now dispute the five stages well. I mean, that's, that's understandable. Everyone's different, isn't it? I like to think. Um, yeah, so late 2018, early 2019, I was doing a lot of, oh, it's a crying statue. It's another crying statue. And it's another crying statue. These are all very sad people, understandably speaking. And are you becoming 
you're becoming a, a column you're you're closing yourself off slowly but surely if we go back to this one here we can see these look more human and more human there we go we've got no no column there basically column at the top and bottom and a full human and then we've got a little bit more column and a little bit more column yeah so you're, you're closing yourself off it's little bits like that I completely missed last time I mean I saw them obviously but I didn't really oh hello um, yeah so early 2019 I probably wanted to make something that felt like do you know those like lo-fi hip-hop playlists on YouTube that you see oh hello I always made something like that for gaming because I I was really into that sort of lo-fi genre and I wanted to oh hello uh, I wanted to um, I was mainly working on research uh, in my job and I was reading a lot of academic papers and stuff like that and I was doing a lot of experimental tech work um, which I still do to be fair and I found that let's just block myself in place I found that I wanted music I could listen to but not hear which is sounds crazy I must admit um, yeah I wanted music I could listen to but didn't have to listen to <laughs> um, and lo-fi lo-fi music scratch that itch it was what I needed at that time and I listened to it constantly and for a while I wanted to uh, how to do, do I have to get myself blown off here yeah I do excellent got it um, I realized that for ages after that I was playing games that when the pandemic hit I played uh, Animal Crossing on switch constantly every day every single day as many people did but every single day I was on Animal Crossing and then I realized I was playing Stardew Valley a lot and then I realized I was playing other games like that a lot so oh no am I stuck now oh no I can get out this way good and that sort of stuck and I, I've been rolling around my head since that point and I'm like I want to make this a real thing I want to I want to celebrate and I think Spirit Fairer came out and I, I wanted to make that a uh, uh, the sort of let's just bash our way through this um, I wanted to make Spirit Fairer sort of the poster game for lo-fi gaming where it was games that uh, meant something they weren't jumpy they weren't actiony they were stories right but they didn't just have to be like boring stories they were like touching stories and oh hello they're pretty can I do anything no I don't think I can Oh. It's a lot of very sad statues. <laughs> Does that just create more butterflies? Oh, it does. Oh, okay. Oh. Are they butterflies or are they not? Oh, I've, I've not done this. Oh, I see. <laughs> I must have done that. Oh, yeah, I must have done this. <laughs> I thought that was a secret. Well, it might be. I'm not, I'm not 100% certain. I know, I do remember this bit. This bit looks like a roller coaster. Whee! so yeah so that was that was what i wanted i've had this in my head for ages and secretly i've had in my head for ages the lo-fi gaming would become like a book and if anybody knows the bitmap books um they do like really nice thick books that have like lots of graphics in them and they did like the history of the nes and the history of the amiga and stuff like this and they're coffee table books right well i thought games that 
would specifically be you know beautiful games that had a meaning and a purpose and they either touched you emotionally or oh, let's just jump on my way up here is there a thing i need to get no i don't think so um i want to fill a book with that i want to fill a book with art and interviews and the feeling you got when you played a certain game and stuff like this and that's still in my head I don't don't get me wrong but what i would like to do is i'd like to get this series this channel up and running and getting a good flow of playing through different lo-fi games and it being a space where people can you know they can i'd like to say escape but if you want to have this on i always used to say when i posted these to the peripheral mic youtube channel if you want to have this on in the background it's totally fine if you want to have this on uh, in a different tab it's also totally fine you you don't want to pay attention to it that's all right you know you can just listen that's not a problem um it's one of the reasons why if you're on Twitch, you'll understand this. If you're on YouTube, you might not understand this. Um, why the intro was so haphazard when I first started, um, because I I didn't want to push calls to action. I kind of forgot that because I've been doing screaming at joypad stuff for a bit now, and I kind of forgot that I wanted to. Um, I wanted this to be like a private space for people so they can just have this on and not have the hey it's your boy peripheral mic and all this stuff. so don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe and click the bell icon none of that right and i wanted to offer people that space and i wanted people to be able to feel safe and comfortable and be able to think you know i'm going to go here i know exactly what to expect and that's kind of why it doesn't live is there something down here oh yeah, there is um that's kind of why it never lived on the peripheral mic channel why it became its own entity because it doesn't live next to spooky games and it doesn't live next to uh, you know, VR phasmophobia streams and all this sort of stuff. It lives. It should live on its own. It should have its own space. Its own. You know, if I feel like it's old enough now, it should have its own space where it can live and and grow and be free. And I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like you're describing puzzles with more emotion, but it could also be that I'm too math obsessed. Well, yeah, maybe. Not that you're too math obsessed. It could be that uh, that's that's exactly what I'm describing. I'm, I guess I don't really know. I don't really know what I'm describing. Like, there's a very clear, for me, there's a very clear distinction about what I want from Screaming at Joypad, right? I want to play horror games. That's, and I can, I will take games. The difference between this and Screaming at Joypad is I will take games uh, that people suggest. Uh, screaming at a joypad and i'll just play them and if it's not scary it's fine and if it's scary fantastic whereas this i'll vet things a bit more if that makes sense hey fuck where is it how you doing um yeah i'll vet things a bit more that's why i wanted to say you know there is a bit where because originally 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 i wasn't going to include this in lo-fi gaming because i thought well no, the, the, there is a not a scary bit but there's a and a, a perilous bit and i didn't really know if i wanted to include that but then i thought to myself well i've played journey and that includes a perilous bit as well so i don't know how far how far do i actually want to go with that you know how far do i want to set the goalposts whereas there was a lot of stuff going for this game um obviously personal reasons because i've uh, you know, the character in this lost their mother i also lost my mother a little while ago i said a lot when i was younger um but yeah it's it can i stop this i can stop this i can't quite remember where i'm going now i'll be honest with you i'm i've talked enough that i've forgotten what i'm doing um i think i'm going down go away um yeah so i just i wanted to kind of I'm not going down there. I wanted to sort of share what lo-fi gaming was. And it's grown. And it's grown from its own series on a YouTube channel. Hopefully to its own YouTube channel. And there's also going to be a, a TikTok channel as well. For anyone who does enjoy TikTok. I have a love-hate relationship with it. I can find myself scrolling TikToks and shorts for a very long time. 
But I also know, I recognize, that it's probably a really good way of getting people to look at your content. And I'm fine with that. So if that's a thing, then that's a thing, you know? If it's not too much of a hassle for me to make these shorter videos for people who want to consume these videos in that format, it's not a problem. I'll, I'll do that. And just to bring you up to speed with boring subjects, I'm learning Adobe Premiere Pro. Dun, 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 dun. Now, I've talked about this on stream before, but I've sacked off my previous video editing software because it really frustrated me. It really, really frustrated me a little while ago. Um, and I don't mind going into the details of it, but basically there was a copy paste screw up and I I just, I was in a bad mood because of work stuff. And I was just like, I'm not having any more of this. And I just deleted it and I uninstalled it. And I'm like, I'm just gonna pretend, oh look, there's those fly bats again. Um, I'm just gonna pretend I don't have one, basically. Hup, hup, hup. Oh, I can break this. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm learning as I go with Premiere Pro. Oh, that sounds like a series, doesn't it? Is that a, is that a thing? Oh, that is a thing. Lovely. That's a memento. In my experience, the TikTok algorithms feels predatory more so than YouTube's. All algorithms are as predatory as the people who code them. That's people, you know, I don't have an ethical, well, I do have an ethical standing on uh, social media but if it means that I mean so one of the things I'm doing with my shorts and TikToks is I'm taking swear words out of them right because I don't want I mean if, if kids find this uh, channel quite clearly says this is for mature audiences I uh, quite clearly state that screaming at a joypad there's going to be swears and scares 100% but I don't want kids like accidentally finding it and being like that guy said the F word or the C word and you know get into controversy for it but yeah i i'm having worked with machine learning algorithms for a long time now i'm well aware that algorithms are only as effective or ineffective as the people who make them which is why i always try and push ethical committees on people i well not on people obviously but i always try and push the subject of ethical committees i always say you know if you're going to make this thing that makes these decisions automatically for people, you've got to make sure that it's taking into account all the people you're thinking of because it normally doesn't. For most companies, most businesses uh, think a certain, think one way, they look one way, they act one way, they sound one way. So it's, it's all very much a case of everything's catered for one type of person. And that's not, that's not fair. That's unconscious bias. So pop, pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. And I'm never getting that memento. Oh, there's bats on the way. I, my controller's shaking. Oh, maybe there's not. I wonder if I can lower this. Oh, I can just lower it by being a block. That's cool. Let's get that star. Um. Oh, I see. I think I see anyway. If I lower this... And then, can I, do I need to lower this to the point where I can jump on that bit? That bit near the balloon? Or can I just walk up this bit? No, I can't just walk up this bit. Of course I can't just walk up this bit. There was an interesting anecdote a little while ago um, that said uh, that the, the, the main uh, use of TikTok is to destabilize a generation and I don't I honestly I haven't done a lot of research into this um, but it would be interesting to know if uh, geographically speaking TikToks were different in different locales so there was a anecdote on it by uh, I'd say an academic I don't think it was but by someone posing in that field that said oh all american tiktoks are hey kids go do these dumb pranks and all um asian tiktoks or far eastern tiktoks were hey go get invested in this stem project and that was you know what better way i did think about it and i'm like what what better way to destabilize a, a group of people or a nation than to just make their new, next generation dumb and it's a genius thought but it, it was one of those i bet that's that's just my conspiracy theory hat on there oops i missed Oop. 
So for anyone just tuning in, this is Gris. Um, basically, we're going to be going through renditions of the five stages of grief because the main protagonist here sadly lost her mother. Um, this is one of those games that doesn't have any dialogue. It's all imagery based and it's all, you know, you're uncovering the story as you go. And I think that's a... Is that a Oh, I was going to say, I think that's a thing with legs, but I'm not sure. Um, we're going to, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to try and get through it today. Oh, hello. Are you just following me? You're, you're, you're quite adorable for a walking rock. For a sentient rock, you're quite adorable. How do... Uh, I don't know how I do anything right now. I can't get up there, can I? No. Come back, sentient rock. Uh, I'm warning that TikTok seems more designed to show people things they will enrage them. All algorithms at this point have learned that people gravitate towards extremes. It's not my phone ringing. Um, these tend to be either things they like or things they really don't. This is true. This is very true. But then media as well is like that. And... Um, you know, I know podcasts that have turned into that sort of... Um, kind of extreme bias there like even if they don't believe it they know it makes good television or they know it makes good um radio to to be on one extreme side or another so i think that's just part of human nature to be honest with you it's a sad part of human nature but it is part of human nature but i agree i i think it's more um I think it's always more geared towards oh I've forgotten where I'm going now. Sorry. I, I had to think for a second then, which means I can't talk and think at the same time for some reason. Um, hey, there we go. We've made the bridge. Lovely. Uh, yeah, I think it's easy to to forget that a lot of algorithms nowadays, that's a broad term, algorithms. Having written algorithms in the past, it's a very broad term. Because unless you are specifically sitting and coding one yourself, which is, don't get me wrong, very 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 hard like phd in computer like masters in computer science and a phd level hard um you're reusing code and you're reusing code that somebody else wrote right which means you, that's you're already injecting unconscious bias into it you know right from scratch you're injecting the unconscious bias that someone else had that's not an opinion that's that's fact you know and that's something you have to consider if you're going to make an algorithm. If I made an algorithm that said, um, I want an algorithm to say what uh, um, game I should play next. And I use code that was written by someone who loves uh, horror games. There's a very good chance that horror games will come up first. You know? Um Folklorizing 899 says, I think every generation has something that people say makes them dumb. Millennials, GIF, uh, video games were the birth of online multiplayer and games becoming a huge juggernaut of entertainment. Gen Z had social media, uh, Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, MySpace. MySpace. Let's not forget Bebo. Jeez, everyone forgets about Bebo. Uh, oh, I need to be higher up. I need to give it more of a whack. Uh, and now the new generation has things like YouTube and TikTok. Uh, I might have also completely missed the point of what you were saying. I was only half listening. I just got off nights this morning, so I feel like I'm a time traveler. That's understandable, friend. Tiredness will get you. Uh, hopefully, you are able to get some rest soon. I really hope, anyway. It is part conspiracy, part true. TikTok does nothing good for people's ability to learn, but TikTok didn't destroy attention spans. Oh, no, absolutely not. Um, it adapted to the uh, already short ones. As easy as it is to blame TikTok, the platform simply hasn't been around long enough to be guilty of anything that people accuse it of, except the possible inclusion of spyware. True. All true facts. You are not wrong there. Something doesn't make... Oh, I missed. Oh, I didn't miss. I'm not heavy enough. Um, something doesn't make people dumb overnight. Uh, and like I said, that is, is, it is a conspiracy theory that I read. Um, but it's an interesting one and it's one of those things I'm like from a technological point of view I wonder if that's true like I wonder if that's actually a thing that is happening in the world you know I wonder if I have to go over here 
I do have to go over here. I have to, I have to be higher. We have to get higher. I mean, I do enjoy TikTok. The only thing I don't enjoy about TikTok is how much time I can spend on that platform. And I do, uh, I do, I just scroll, basically. It's what I used to do. So I used to be very guilty of doom scrolling on Twitter, um, which is obviously the definition of doom scrolling is scrolling social media for, uh, until you find uh, news that makes you sad, basically. <laughs> just scrolling for stuff that makes you sad. Um, it's a little similar with shorts and tiktoks and even instagram reels um i can waste hours looking at it you know and i am just wasting hours i'm just scrolling my phone for no apparent reason and that's fine there are sometimes when i want to do that i uh, i like that there are they are short self-contained videos i like that some of them are funny i like that if i like certain ones like stand-up comedy and video games i'll get more stand-up comedy and video games and occasionally I'll get, you know, here's a cleaning hack you didn't know and didn't know you needed. And I'm like, oh, wow, that, that actually looks all right. But yeah, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting topic of conversation. Ooh, white bricks now. It's also interesting. Hop, hop, hop. <gasps> it's another hand. Hello. So if that was denial, green, a colour has been brought back. Um, that makes this anger? Which I don't know, green isn't an especially angry colour to me. Whee! Maybe they're really angry plants. Who knows? Oh, I was like, my throat is really dry. I have water right next to me. Wee Punk. Well, I'm facing left, so I'm going to go right. I just want to say how pretty this game looks. It looks a little, uh, sort of like a 2D look of Journey. I like it. It's a beautiful game. Don't get me wrong. And that's, that's one of the things this series is about. It's about beautiful games that, you know, hopefully hold a message and some of them are you know just relaxing games that's why i wanted to know people's comfort games i really want to know people's comfort games Hacha. um because oh i don't think i meant to do that <laughs> oh no what have i done i've released the fireflies um oh i'm back at the hub that's where i am i'm back at the hub now interesting uh yeah i wanted to know what people's comfort games were because they come in all different weird shapes and sizes so there are some comfort games that are you know like this and they are comforting they're comfort games like i said i play cozy grove as a bit of a comfort game at the moment um oh is this to tell me how many mementos are in different areas is that what this is telling me what about the one down here i think there was one down here anyway are you telling me? No, that's telling me that. I've got all the mementos from that area, which I think is the, the area we've just been in. But it's interesting to know, because some people have said, you know, their comfort game is WoW and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's not really something I want to put on lo-fi gaming, but... Uh, oh, I can't get back over. Oh, no. Curses. <laughs> can I destroy something to get back over? Maybe I can destroy something to get back over. Uh, in a way, my laziness with regards to new platforms has uh, entered me against TikTok. Um, the one good thing that Google has going for it is they do know how to make halfway decent search system that doesn't completely rely on content text. That's true. That's very true. Better the devil you know, right? I love the... Uh, I had to look at the Google graveyard recently. If you don't know what the Google graveyard is, I'd absolutely recommend, um, go, well, Googling it, basically, because it, uh, yeah, it's all the projects that Google have um, have abandoned over the years. And from a technical point of view, it's just interesting to see 
how much R&D goes into some of the... Oh, hello. Can I go down there now? No, okay. Your comfort games are things like Farming, Simulator, Stardew Valley, Townscaper, and Lake. Just chill games that I don't really have to think hard about and have to react quickly. That, they're all solid choices. Very solid choices. I didn't realize how much I would be enamored by Lake. Um, Lake is definitely on the list to play for lo-fi gaming, but I did not realize how much I would... Uh, wee, how much I would enjoy Lake and how invested I got. Like it was, it was like watching a weird Hallmark movie, you know, or a Hallmark series that I was just weirdly invested in. <laughs> and I'm surprised how much I enjoy Townscaper as well. Oh, I can't go that way. Yeah, I'm surprised how much I enjoy Townscaper because it's, it's, I'd say pointless. It's not pointless, but it is pointless. But it's one of those games that you're just like, this is pointless, but I really want to play more of it. Like, <laughs> And there are games like um, Beacon Pines. If anybody's played Beacon Pines, that's a that feels very lo-fi. That feels very much like a lo-fi game. Yeah, who knew delivering milk could be so good? I right? <laughs> who knew delivering milk could be so good? And who knew we'd have a love interest between a lumberjack and a woman who works in a TV in a video rental shop? I was like, what? This is amazing. <laughs> Donut County. I've heard Donut County mentioned a couple of times. I've never played it, but it seems like one of those games. It's kind of a chill out, zone out game. Um, and there, they just just scratch an itch. They really do. I'm interested to know if you were to watch. I don't know how many people are watching right now. I haven't got. I haven't got that up. Um, because that's also spoiler alert. That's one of the things I don't. I don't notice. I don't pay attention to when I'm streaming is how many people are watching. But I'm interested to know people in chat, if you were to watch games like this, would you prefer them? If you went to a channel that had nothing but comfort games, would you like it to have someone talking over it? Would you like it to be just gameplay? Or would you like it to be both? Because both can totally happen. It just has to be slightly different recording setup. Film call tonight. Guys, put that aside. It's seven o'clock now. I don't know many doctors that work after seven. My medication is going to have to wait until the morning. That makes me sad. Which is ironic considering it's antidepressants we're talking about. What's that following us? It's a, it's a cute little square-headed thing. <laughs> you think you would prefer both straight-up gameplay and talking over? So if you had the choice, so if you saw this, this, this game, would you like a? Here's the game with game with uh, voiceover, and also here's the game without voiceover. I I don't know if they'd be the same video, but they'd be close, you know. Maybe here's a play, here's a, here's a gameplay only playthrough of this game. And here's Mike when he streamed this game. Oh no, I fell. Hop. I gotta get my hedges in order. Or I'm gonna die. Oh no. Oh no. There we go. Did not think that was going to go well. Then I thought I'd left that far too long. Mm. Folklorizing, you make a very good point. Depends on how you're feeling at the time. Now, weirdly, I didn't realize this. Uh, so I used to do what I called drop the mic streams, which was Mike as in M I C and Mike as in M I K E, because I thought it was hilariously funny. I mean, I am. I'm a gift the comedy the world of comedy but um i don't want to go that way i 
um, used to do like like voiceless streams and this would be mainly the, the real secret behind this was because I was streaming directly from my console and it wouldn't have a microphone attached to it so I was like do you know what I'm gonna market this a different way I'm gonna have drop the mic streams and people I mean weirdly it never took off strange as that may be um, but people now recently have said that when I've done that and they've watched it that's been what they've needed at that time so I'm like well, could I do could I do that could I do just playthroughs of games like video because that would be I mean for me personally that would be dead easy um, that would be oh I've, I've knocked a little square thing out of a tree a little fruit and maybe this is how the channel evolves you know hello hello friend hello tiny square friend Hello. You're adorable. I want a plushie of you. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I, I'm not immediately going to be like, well, Simon wants me to do this, so I'm going to do this. But it's something to consider in future. Like if I've got a game that's, I think this is what, three or four hours long, I think. I've got a game that's a number of hours long and I'm like, I have more than enough capacity to There you go. Have a have a thing. Nom, 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 nom. I have more than enough capacity to record something for this game. Then I'm probably gonna record something for that game. So just interesting to know what people what people would be interested in. And I think there's there's part of me that thinks to myself, well, I had that idea in my head anyway, so why am I not just doing it? <laughs> and that's what this whole kind of YouTube Twitch split has has made me realise that these ideas are they're all right ideas. I do have decent ideas. I just don't follow them through. It's like I did Vinyl Fantasy. For anyone who doesn't know, I did an episode of Vinyl Fantasy, which is basically I made a series about I say series. It's one episode. I mean, I started a series about video game music on vinyl with, um, oh, I cannot remember his name. And I'm really, really sad because he's such a cool dude. Uh, the guy who did the music for, hello, um, Blood and Truth on PlayStation VR. Brilliant game. One of the best PSVR games I've ever played in my life. But basically, oh, little, little Cubeman, I will die for you, Cubeman. Um, yeah, so he sent me some vinyl. Oh, I, I, sorry, I sent him my vinyl of his music. He signed it and sent it back, and I did an interview with him. And it was a really nice interview, and it was it felt very professional, and it felt very just really good to be honest with you. And I I really enjoyed it. And then I posted it to the vinyl um and video game music vinyl subreddits and loads of people loved it and then because i was so terrified of my own success i was like cool i'm never gonna do that again because <laughs> that's how my brain works <laughs> like excellent i'm never gonna do that again and then austin wintry if you don't know who austin wintry is look at journey right the guy who did the soundtrack to journey and several others reached out and said this is a really nice idea this guy's told me about it. I would like to do this when I have time. Can you get back to me in a couple of months? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely, sure. So then what did I do? Sabotage myself. So I have decent ideas. I just don't I don't always put them into action. Uh, one thing you could do is release two videos, one where you just remove the voice audio track. That's very true. This is very, very true. But then what would I do about my face? Do you know what I mean? Hi. Hi. Oh wow, you have superpowers. So like if I had also I'm faffing around quite a lot here, I'm jumping quite a lot. How annoying is that gonna be to watch? <laughs> I think if I if I did a separate video, I'd do it in more of a cinematic way. Not a cinematic way, but a cinematic way, if that makes sense. Unless there is a way of having of removing me my my face from the from the lo-fi gaming streams. Oh, hello. Oh, wow, you appear to have disappeared. <laughs> and so do I. Hi. 
Who's a strong boy? You're a strong lad. Come on, strong lad. Whee! <laughs> Look at him rolling down the hill. Whee! Thunk. I'm gonna go check on him first. Hello. You okay? You doing good? Yeah, you're doing good. Let's go this way. Yeah, this doesn't feel like anger to me, this this level. Or maybe I'm maybe I'm oh you can have a little apple there. Maybe I don't know the levels. Maybe somebody can Google the levels for me. What levels are what? What's the red level? What's the green level? Because I would say that the red level would be anger. But maybe it's not. And maybe the green level's denial. I'm not sure. Oh. Where are you going? Bye bye. Can I come with you? No. I can't come with you. Bye bye, little friend. Yeah, there'd be there'd be a way, wouldn't there? There's definitely a way. I'm a, I'm a smart dude, so <laughs> there's definitely going to be a way of doing that. I know how people like Markiplier and Jacksepticeye do their videos. They do it as like when they do video videos, they do it as like two 1080p streams of their of their gameplay and their webcam, and then they layer them over each other, which is why it's such high quality. Just not sure how I could do. Now I could do that in... Oh! Oh, I've fallen down a hole. I didn't even get to explore. Curses. Um, I don't know how I could do that. I mean, we're now, to be fair... Hello! Now I'm learning Premiere Pro. I bet there's a way. Bet there's a way. Even if it's just, like, smart deleting my face. <laughs> Hi! You alright? How are we all doing? We all just chilling out down here? Are you are you chilling out for a reason? Are you are you hiding from something, or is this just do you just like the cool? I mean, in fairness, it's been so warm recently. I wish I lived underground. There's, there's a bit. Uh, oh hi! When we go to play um, badminton at the local sports center, we have to go through a subway, and ah, oh, thank you. We have to go through a subway, and I um, there's a there's a it's a very very cold underground section, and I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it, especially during the heat wave. Well, I say during the heat wave, we're in the middle of a heat wave now. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, it definitely made me think. Every time we go down there, I'm just like, yeah, I could probably live underground. Hi. Oh, I've only got one. I see. Let's go this way. Boop. Do we think there's going to be another one over here? Mm, true. The main bottleneck would either be my graphics card or my upload speed. Probably my upload speed, to be honest with you. Oh, they change when I jump. Oh, I see. Oh, I wonder if the others... Oh, the others definitely didn't change when I jumped. The others, I fell through one of them when it changed. So, okay, no more going left. We've got to go right. Hop and hop. Leap of faith. Leap of faith. Leap of faith. Leap of faith. And that way. And this way. And this way. So now. How do I get that? If I go there, like that, and then like that, I can jump over here, and then I can drop here, and jump here to get this memento, which is a good thing. And then I can restart this whole process. Jump over here, do that. Jump here, jump here, jump here. Then jump through there. Yeah, lovely. So what appears now? Okay, cool. There, and then there, and then there. 
and now I shouldn't need to go left because I've already got it. I don't think there's anything else there. So let's head back to where we were. Yeah. <laughs> this puzzle is making your brain hurt. <laughs> well, that's okay, because we've done it now, so <laughs> I won't worry too much about that. Wee. Oh, I can fly now. Why well, not fly? I can double jump. Wee. And glide. Up. And now, when I get back to the hub world, I can jump over that little barrier that was there. Hey, up. Hey, up. Help. Oopsie daisy. What's over here first? Oh, poos. Hop. There we go. Yep. Did this change? Oh, this. No, this doesn't change when I jump. It's now going to be a bit more tricky because now they are going to change probably leaving a space of time between them changing so that I can glide, if that makes sense. Instead of it being like an instantaneous change. I'm going to guess those are the only two that change here. Hop. Hurry up. Hurry up. Glide. Hop. 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 More butterflies. Pew. Ooh, left or right, left or right. Let's go left. <laughs> that little jingle jingle. Oh, it feels good to play a game with a controller again. I like playing games with mouse and keyboard, but sometimes I'm just like, I don't remember the buttons, but I'm very, very conditioned to know the controller's buttons. <laughs> so many years holding the controller although in fairness before that i was playing games on mouse and keyboard i did used to be an avid pc gamer Whee. oh i see so i've got to get i got to get two of you Ugh, damn it <laughs> hop ah, lovely and now if i can just yep if I can get up there, that'd be nice. I'm certain I'm missing stuff, but uh, I don't mind. I don't mind too much. Oh, what's down here? Slam. Oh, a memento. Excellent stuff. Uh, nothing else there as far as I can see. How do... How do you get out of here? <laughs> oh, I've released the butterflies. Cool. So that was... That's a way of... Oh, I had to double jump at the end of that. That was a bit tricky. It's a way of making that through. Yeah, I guess... I guess I never mind playing through a game twice if I enjoy it, you know? Oh no. Like, there we go. Um, I never play, mind playing through a game a number of times if I'm enjoying it. I think it's just if, it's, if it was a very long game, like Animal Crossing, for example. Like, Animal Crossing was, for a long time, was my comfort game of choice. That was my comfort drug. And I think if keep going keep pressing the a button fly fly oh what was, hang on wait what's down here oh nothing <laughs> my my need for secrets is greater than my need for progression <laughs> love all these crying statues i don't love these crying statues i like the kind of the implication of them that makes sense. The the analogous material of them. Release the butterflies. 
I assume they're butterflies. They might not be butterflies. Maybe I haven't reached another level. Anything this way? No? Oh, okay. Nothing that way. Got it. It doesn't oh you're all turned black that's unfortunate i think that means you're you're bad butterflies uh. oh dear <laughs> you are you're definitely oh no time to leave to a big block so you can't knock me over this is reminiscent now i think about it this is reminiscent of being chased by songbird in uh, bioshock infinite bioshock infinite i think is a bit of an underrated game i know it was a critically acclaimed game but i think a lot of people didn't like it because it it wasn't bioshock one but then it also wasn't bioshock two you know but i think people sort of forgot about it but I, uh, I really like the idea of some of the Bioshock Infinite. I need to play that at some point. Escape the giant bird of grief. Definitely what that's an analogy for, right? Oh, I, mean, you, well, I was going to say, well, ah, oh, but also thanks. You made me miss my, uh, my birds, but oh, I've missed that completely. Um, but also, you shot me into the air, which is what the birds were going to do. So, kind of ouch, kind of things. Is it this way? Whee. You loved Bioshock. You shame it was a victim of its own success, though. What's what do you mean by that? Because I know a number of people who mean different things when they say that. Uh, I'm interested to know what your what your opinion was on that. That's the wrong way. It is not left. It is right. Oh no! Big birds come to get me. So even with moments like this, and like I said, these are these are pretty perilous moments. I do like to think this is a this is a lo-fi game. It, it's a bit not chasey, but it's a bit frantic at the moment. But I think if we take this for what it is, this is an analogy for Gris's pain and grief and all the misery that she's going through at the moment. It would be very easy for her to succumb to this, and very easy for her to. But just give up and maybe this is a way of oh oh dear I missed I missed maybe this is a way for her to try and carry on through what's happened which isn't you know what everyone gets to do it's it's not a, a thing that everyone has a choice in but oh I wasn't flying when the bird did that Unfortunate. I remember the giant bird of grief. Hard, hardest real boss fight. Real life boss fight. Yeah. yeah. 
I don't know. This is this is one of the reasons why I like games like this is I get to have open and honest conversations about things that have happened in my life and I don't think I ever truly processed my mum passing away when I was about 13 and I mean since then I've lost many friends and family members um, fa friends, family members, mentors, co-workers etc but I think I never I never truly processed it when it happened so things like this, they 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 sort of they touch a, a certain nerve because it's easy to think about myself in that position when I was that age, you know? Because my, I mean, my teenage years fucking sucked, right? My mum had just passed away, and my oh, you don't like the ringing bells, do you? Uh, so my mum had just passed away, and my dad was uh, disabled, so I became his full-time carer, basically. So. But I um, it's one of the reasons why I like I think I like Silent Hill two so much because it it allowed me spoiler alert uh, the end of Silent Hill two involves a scene where someone dies right and it's, it's a big reveal and it's a big spoiler and I'm not going to go into too much detail even though because I know it's coming out again soon it's being remade which I'm very very excited about so I don't want to spoil the actual story for people who haven't played it but there's a bit in that where basically um that whole story regardless of its subject matter right that whole story made it easier for me to hello undeveloped bruce how are you it's an absolute pleasure to see you undeveloped bruce is one of the excellent D, &D players that i play with over on the gog uh godcom channel that's uh, twitch.tv forward slash gogcom we play uh, normally twice a month we are playing next week we're playing ghosts of salt marsh um uh, Undeveloped Bruce is not a member of that campaign, uh, but Undeveloped Bruce is a member of the um, Talisman Adventures uh, campaign. And I've forgotten what I'm doing. Oh, I remember now. Come here. Uh, come here. Don't get angry with me. Don't get angry with me. Come on. That's it. Sod off. Now let me destroy this. Let me use the nice the nice birds. And now how do I get I'm not a fan of the bells, I uh not fully remember how to do this. There we go. I just have to poke it in the face. There we are. Um, yeah, so it's one of the reasons why I uh, liked Silent Hill 2 so much is because it, at the end of Silent Hill 2, and again, no spoilers, because like I said, it's coming out again soon. Um, there's a, there's a, uh, it's not a scene, it's not a section, there's sort of like a, There's a concept, there's a theory there that uh, actually helped me when I played it at the time kind of let go of uh, sort of my mum passing away. And it was, a, it's a weird, and I didn't realise it at the time. I've only just realised it over the past 12 months or so. And I'm actually making a video on it at the minute. And it's one of the only pre sort of made videos I'm going to do um, anytime soon that doesn't that isn't live on Twitch. But it, it's basically how Silent Hill 2 helped me grieve for my mother's passing and it helped me realise that actually it's okay that she's not around anymore, you know. But it's it's games like that that sort of, they touch you differently in different ways. Oh, we've got another stone hand. Um, they touch you differently in different ways. I remember when I first played uh, Spiritfarer. Spiritfarer came out and I was not prepared for Spiritfarer. I was mentally and emotionally not prepared for Spiritfarer in the slightest. Uh, but that's also a game that, you know, it, it touches on the subject of saying goodbye and death and moving on and celebrating life and all this sort of stuff. So that's definitely something that's going to be up on Lo-Fi Gaming.
a color has been brought back. Oh, <laughs> that's a bit, a bit anticlimactic. Yeah, everything in this game is real nice, isn't it? I, I played this first, I was saying a little while ago, I played this first on Switch. And it was nice on Switch, but my god, whoa, it, is, it is nice on a monitor. <laughs> Very nice on a monitor. Oh, my retinas, ah! When will game designers learn to use an off, an eggshell instead of a white? Let's go left and not right. Dive. Oh, wait. I forgot what I can do. Sploosh. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, can I not go left? Can I swim? Oh, yeah, I can. I just can't dive. Okay. That's understandable. Hmm. I wonder if that's an invisible platform. <laughs> yeah, it's games like this that I just, I just think it's such, it's so comfortable to play. What was another cozy one I played recently? Um, can I land on this? Yes, I can land on this. Yeah, I played a lot. Like I said, Cozy Grove is probably my 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 go-to at the minute. Um. Oh, Death's Door. I played Death's Door a little while ago, and that was weirdly cozy. For an isometric um, action-adventure, that was incredibly comforting, that game. Uh, oh, uh, Tunic as well. Tunic was very strange, because Tunic was basically... Again, it's sort of the parental um, uh, interest in the parental relationship building there. That's, I mean, I'm seeing a theme here. Um, that I was interested in with this. How do? Where do you go now? I uh, I can go over there, but I can go under. Oh, this gets me a memento. Uh, oh no, that gets me a memento. This gets me nothing. Cool, going the wrong way. Um, yeah, Tunic. Tunic was a weird game. I think I named Tunic as like my indie game of choice recently uh, on one of the Q and A videos because it's. And I don't know. I think if I put God Mode on it, because you have the option to play it with God Mode on, like you take no damage, basically, and you have infinite stamina, I think it could be a strong contender for lo-fi gaming. Because the, the entire game is about uh, breaking like a time loop so that you and your supposed mother can be... And I say supposed because it's never actually explained, but you get the idea. Like They look very similar. Um, can be reunited. So I just get the... I just get the feeling that Eep. Oh. Tunic is the game I most want to forget. I especially wish I could forget the language. <laughs> is that, do you wish you could forget it so you can experience it again, Chris? So that's the thing. Because that's why I wish I could forget games. I've got at least, well, I can at least think of at least one game that I'm thinking of right now that I wish I could forget that I could play again. Hello. Are you adorable? Oh, you can come back. It's okay. No. Oh. I'm sure they'll come back. Hmm. Well, when in Rome. Yeah, so you could play it again. I don't like that. There's a PlayStation 1 game. Uh, it's just over there on that shelf, actually, um, called Sui Coden. I don't know if anybody's ever played it. It's a uh, JRPG. It, it It's the first video game I ever cried to because a character passes away in it, and I'd never experienced that in a story-based game before, ever. And it's that I wish, I really, really wish I could forget that game so I could play it afresh and not go, oh, I remember this bit. And I used to, um, I used to leave it like two or three years before playing it again so that I would have forgotten a lot of it. And in fairness, I mean, I haven't owned it for nearly 10 years. So, but I, I weirdly, I started playing it. Um, I played it. I played the first like hour of it a little while ago. I was, I was only testing the disc. I just wanted to know if it worked because I bought it on eBay. I was just testing the disc. Um, oh, this is the, I'm back at the, the hub. 
Um, yeah, I was testing the disc and I just didn't know. So does that mean there's another... There's another memento here somewhere. Um, but I ended up playing like the first hour of it and I'm like, oh, I remember all of this really well. <laughs> I wonder if there's another memento over here. Sploosh. Sploosh. No. <laughs> okay. Sploosh. Sploosh. Let's just swim. I don't know how many mementos there are. And I'm not, I don't mind if we don't get them all. I've got to be honest. But there is a part of me that's like, I'd kind of like all the mementos. <laughs> if we could get what, what would be considered to be the true ending, like first time, that'd be good. Hello? Is that just echoey? Because it's echoey. Yeah. Yeah, it's just echoey because it's echoey. Okay. What's happening here? You want to get Sea of Solitude so you can play again for the first time, man. That's a Sea of Solitude? I've never played Sea of Solitude before. What other games do I wish I could forget? Are there any games, anybody else in chat, is there anybody else who wish they could forget a game so they could experience it again? A Bioshock 1, while we're on the subject of Bioshock. Yeah, I think Bioshock 1, while we're on that subject, I think that, that definitely is a game I wish I could forget so I could play it again and not know what's going to happen, not know the twist. You know, because I remember that. That changed my perception of gaming when it when it happened. Um, can't I think of any others. I mean, there are, there are definitely... Definitely going to be more of them. What's over here? Oh, it's, I can get here now. There's water here. Um, I wish I could forget League of Legends, but not so I could play it again, so I could break free of it. Oh, I didn't realize, I didn't realize you were a League of Legends player. I'm certain you've mentioned that in the past, though. I'm absolutely certain of it. But I, uh, I, I must have not saved that information. Much like eating dinner or lunch today. <laughs> Thanks, brain. That's not true. I did have lunch. I had a bowl of soup. Well, not a soup. I had a cup of soup. Two, a third of which is sat in a cup next to me. <laughs> a third of a cup of cold soup. I'm so rubbish sometimes. <laughs> As a self-sustaining human being, I'm pretty crap. <laughs> eh, rush. Spadoosh. Let's go see the turtle. Spoosh. Wee. Hello. Hi. <laughs> That's not how water works. That's not how water works at all. This is very Hollow Knight. <laughs> this this feels very much like I'm going to just see, you know, uh, one of the characters. I'm going to see the last stag just sat in a corner somewhere. <laughs> Uh, I need more games in the language that have a you have to learn to progress. I also wish I could forget uh, Nautocrawl. Nautocrawl is a game that doesn't tell you what the controls are. It has a built-in exploit that trivializes the game. It does eventually tell you the exploit, but I figured it out in the first area, which ruined the game for me. <laughs> well, that's that's unfortunate. Nautocrawl. I've never heard of that either. Also, I'd like to get the Mass Effect series so I can play for the first time. That's a good shout. I I wish that's another topic, really. I wish I could forget games. Like I wish I could play a remaster instead of a game. Like that that which sounds crazy, right? But but hear me out. I wish I could play the remaster of Mass Effect rather than the game itself. Uh, where am I going? Oh, I'm doing this. Um, yeah, I wish I could play the remaster of a game instead of the original game. Because I, lo I love the Mass Effect series, but I have a feeling I would enjoy the Mass Effect remaster way more now than the original ones. Speaking of which, actually, this might not make it into the YouTube edit. I was thinking of you 
folklorising 809 the other day when I was in a charity shop in Nottingham, uh, which is where I hail from. Well, not where I hail from, but where I live. Because uh, I picked up all three. Oh, that's not worked, has it? Thanks, fake green screen. All three. Let's see if I can just do this. Mass Effect games on Xbox 360. And now all I need is an Xbox 360 to play them on. <laughs> so I thought of you, because they were all there, and they were £2 a piece. Resume. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I thought I saw those, and I thought of you. Uh, if you know what you're doing, you can beat Nauta Crawl in about 30 minutes, but then you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Yeah, there was something about Tunic. I got, I, I played Tunic to death and I got like what's considered like the secret ending and I did the the uh, weird um, web page message ending and stuff like this. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure that developer's okay. <laughs> I think someone needs to go check on that dev uh, just to make sure they're all right. But that was probably the game... It took me most by surprise because I expected it to be... Has anyone played The Tourist? It's a voxel-based game where you play as someone you play as someone going around uh, different islands, taking pictures and solving puzzles, right? Um, and it's a fun game. It, don't get me wrong. It's a very fun game. But it's a very simple game. And it's got a very simple uh, mechanic. And it's got a very simple gameplay. And I enjoyed it because it was, it was dumb fun, right? So I started playing Tunic and I thought, this is going to be a bit... Eh. This is going to be all right. I'm going to enjoy it, but I'm probably not going to complete it. And then I started to uncover a few bits and pieces about it. And I'm like, this is really different to what I thought it would be. <laughs> like really, really different to what I thought it would be. Um, so yeah, I, I highly, I highly recommend uh, Tunic to anyone who's not played it. Because it, it will, it does, it, uh, once you start playing it, you think to yourself, I know how this is going to go. And then, and the gameplay itself Fair enough, you kind of know how it's going to go. But you start scratching the surface and you're like, oh, this is really different. Uh, it's, it's, uh, obviously, I'm trying to be as spoiler-free as possible because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, and please, anyone in chat, don't spoil anything for people who haven't played it. But it's the first game that made me break out a pad and a pen while playing a game in a long time. Do you have... Oh, you have things in you. Lovely. Swoosh. <laughs> bobbing along bobbing along that's a very quintessentially british reference there Whee. <gasps> another oh my god i've completely forgotten about this another game that scratched an itch i didn't know i had um outer wilds not to be confused with the outer outer worlds uh, but yeah outer wilds oh that <laughs> That game's amazing. Like, properly amazing. Um, uh, but the, the very basic concept of it, for anyone who doesn't know, super basic concept is you are a space ex you're an alien space explorer who is going on his first journey into outer space. And there is a there's a bit of a mystery going on in the universe and you have to sort of start unraveling it death door focus on that death door's amazing absolutely stunner of a game um uh yeah you have to unravel this mystery in outer wilds but the trick is the universe ends every 22 minutes and that's it like the, the nothing else like you you can you have you know oh god i didn't turn myself into a thing into a block um, you have 22 minutes to basically uh, solve the first piece of the puzzle. And then you have 22 minutes to solve the second piece of the puzzle. And then the third piece. And you start to piece it all together. And you're like, oh, it all starts to make a little bit more sense now as to why this is like this and that's like that. And, oh, it's such a good, such a good game. There's a piece of music as well, actually, called The End Times. Uh, if you ever listen to the soundtrack of Outer Wilds, um, it's a very sad piece of music, but it's very short because this is what happens. Because obviously, when the universe ends in the game, you know, the star goes supernova, um, and you hear this piece of music when the star goes supernova, and it doesn't immediately like 
like it doesn't just and you're dead like you have to wait for the star to go like it this music heralds the end of this cycle the end of this run so you're just like oh i've made it this far and i i don't know what i'm gonna do and oh now i have to make my way all the way back and it's it's part frustrating and part like this weird melancholy you're just like you kind of accept that your character is just gonna die oh hello let's just turn myself into a block here then shall we Ravenlock? I've never heard of Ravenlock. It made me break out 16 sheets from a pad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tunic will do that. Let's see if I can make myself... Can I freeze myself in a different position, perhaps? No? Oh, I know. Hang on, hang on. I think I've got this. Oh, I was... I, I blocked too early. I don't think I've heard of Ravenlock, no. Oh, I can't do that. Why can I not do that? Interesting. Oh. <laughs> I think I got this. Falls on the floor. It's, yeah. <laughs> oh, stop doing it so soon. No, I don't. Maybe that's not going to work like that. Maybe it works over here. Oh, no, it doesn't work over here. Okay. Can I even make myself a block in midair? Can I just... Oh, I didn't realize those crunchy sound effects. Oh, that, that's... I think that's me turning into a block rather than me being a block there. I'd really like this memento, please. I don't think I can do that. No, so I can't be a block in midair. How else can I get this memento? Oh, hang on. Like this. Is how I can get this memento. <laughs> Excellent. Yoink. Spoosh. Bobbing along. Bobbing along. Oh, yeah. I'm, I forgot to make a quote bot as well. I was going to make a quote bot. Because there's loads of different commands now. And I'll stick that in chat. Um, there's loads of different commands that I've set up. And there's loads of different point redemption things. You can... Uh, oh, let's just freeze myself here. I assume this is going to freeze in a second. Yep. Um, there's loads of different point redemption things. Uh, someone <laughs> redeemed loads of points last time to make me stretch, hydrate, and take a break. <laughs> Which I thought was quite considerate of them. Uh, but the, um, yeah, I should have made the, uh, the quote bot. Because I, um, I say some random, some random stuff. Right, let's put a block here. And then let's get myself stuck. Curses. Curses, I actually got myself stuck. Okay. Put a oh no, I've fallen in a gap. Put myself here. Oh. Jump, glide, jump, glide, jump, glide, jump. No. No. How do I do this? Um, oh wait, hang on. That's a platform. Why didn't I just jump on that in the first place? <laughs> uh, Ravenlock is fun. It's definitely inspired by Alice in Wonderland. Uh, you basically end up in like this sort of dreamland type place after finding a mirror, I think, and you have to save the day. It's a really fun indie action RPG. You probably like it. It's kind of Zeldry, I guess. Ooh, lovely stuff. Let me just a quick note of that. Oops. Ravenlock game. Thank you. What oh, does look? It does look interesting. It looks very colourful. Splash. Beep boop.
Mm, fun times, I can swim. Swish. I remember one time in my friend's chat. Oh, it's on Game Pass, is it? Excellent. I remember one time in my friend's chat, we calculated that we needed something like 1.25 million points to redeem enough hydrates to cause overhydration. <laughs> are you? I, I get the impression, Chris, that you are very keen on maths. It's just a hint. But I'm definitely getting that vibe. Sploosh. Oh, wait, what's over there? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing's over here. Anything over here? Oh, there might be something over here. Eh, nope, there's a wall. It's a giant fish in the background. Does anybody remember the Xbox Live arcade game, Fish Listening to Radio? <laughs> it was such a random game. I loved I loved spelunking for really obscure games on Xbox Live Arcade. There's one miss about it, to be honest with you. And sploosh. Sploosh. So now I have the power of swimmy. <laughs> the power of stingray. I have two when I need six. Curses. What's this way? Oh, hello. Sploosh? No sploosh. That's a sploosh down, not a sploosh up. I love the little sounds every now and then. They're really, they're really nice. Let's go up here. Sploosh. And then there we are. Anything up here? No secrets. No oh, curses. Up. And up. Oh, I see what I need to. I need to not do that. Spoosh. Oh. I need to do that right, what did I? And hop, hop. There we go. There were some really good indie games back on Xbox Live Arcade. There was a thing called Soul. My friends and I played the crap out of that. It was really good. I played loads of Soul. That was really weird. That was a really weird little indie game. Wasn't it like a horror game? You all are taking notes for games. I uh has made me put my switch on charge for the first time in forever and uh so i can download a Pro professor lane game <laughs> i that's one of my secrets uh, my secret shames is i've never played a professor lane game my other secret shame is i've never played uh, well technically that's not true i've never played a metroid game i have played a metroid game uh, but i've played metroid dread and i've I got, I, I got, I want to say 30% of the way through the game, left it alone for a week, came back to it and was like, I have no idea where, I'm, where I am, what I'm doing, why I'm, why I'm doing it, nothing, I'm lost, just plain lost friends, um, so I just left it and I haven't touched it since. You look like, um, oh, you get to follow me, excellent, I get minions, fantastic. Yeah, it was a horror game. Every screen was a level, and I think you only had one life per screen. Memories of lies. Yeah, it was something like that, wasn't it? I did. I played Soul as well. And weirdly, I, th I think I played it for Slim Gamer. <laughs> I can't get through there. Can I get past this? Is this a thing? Or is this a... No, okay. Fair enough. Um, how do anything... How do you... Yeah, because I used to do uh what was it called? That indie thing I did for Slim Gamer many, many years ago. Uh oh god. Oh, oh, I see what I'm doing with those now. Now I see what I'm doing with them. And it is 
and a series of indie games for Slim Gamer. FYI, don't don't go to slimgamer.com anymore. It's, it's absolute garbage. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, so that's so I can get those. Got it. Get these out of the way. Excellent stuff. And get these. Oh, the Indie Garden, that was it. I used to host a show called The Indie Garden. Yeah, those are some dark time. That was a dark timeline for me back then. <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was a bad that was bad times. Um, funnily enough, I found some of those indie garden videos, and I was playing a game called Eldritch and King Voxel at the the uh, on some of the videos, and I remember I recorded, oh, I think I recorded like five or six episodes of a. Uh, this is oh this is darkness, isn't it? I can't go down here yet without this thing. I recorded like five or six episodes of a series, but on the same day, um, and then I did other videos, and I'm just, I sound so tired and so forced and so just wooden in these videos. It just made me sad listening to them. I think I did a video about um, looking back on my old content, uh, looking back on like 10 year old content of me, and I was just, it's cringy, don't get me wrong, and it's clickbaity. But it was very much, um, some of them were easier to look at than others and some of them were just quite difficult to watch because they remind me of the headspace I was in when I was making them, um, which wasn't a, wasn't a great thing sometimes. Uh, I've forgotten where I'm going. Uh, I think I'm going this way. Because, oh, get off. Because this reflects the one up there, doesn't it? Which means I can go this way and then I can go this way and then I can go this way. And then I can go this way. Yay. And I can get that. However, I need to get up there to that memento. Which means I need some some birdies. And I don't think there are any. Which makes me sad. Uh, oh, unless I can take them from somewhere else. I don't think there are any here. I think maybe I can take them from elsewhere. Uh, oh no, they won't. They won't. Oh no, they will last. They'll last if as long as I don't use them. If I take them from the other area, maybe I can just transfer them over. Sploosh. So I just go over here. Yeah, it's a lot of. Uh, it's a lot of um, forcing myself to sound like every other YouTuber, basically, back then. And I'm aware of the irony that right now I'm doing intros like a proper YouTuber. There is a slight difference with that, though. Um, the main difference being that one day I would like the content creation stuff to overtake my day job. Because um, recently my day job hasn't been great. And I would like it so that I could self-sustain preferably which may not happen but even if i can sustain an an additional number of days without a day job that's fantastic and that means i get to do more content stuff right <laughs> it means i get to play more games on stream and i get to oh i can't take them with me curses uh, i get to play more games on stream and i get to talk to you wonderful people and i get to just be a, a daft loon on the internet for a while. <laughs> right, how many of these have I got? I got five. Five of them. There must be somewhere where I can get... Oh, hello. Where are you going? Where I can get um, these little fireflies from. These little uh, red butterflies. Come here. I'll get you. There we go. Got you. <laughs> You've got a lot better, and though, and these days you don't sound forced. You're doing good, man. You sound natural, and you're entertaining. Yeah, entertaining, and people enjoy watching yourself. Well, I do anyway. And undeveloped is plus one. Thank you so much. I love you guys. <laughs> 
So that's where, so where, how do I get little red duffers from here? How do I get this? I don't want to leave it. I feel like it's going to be the only one I'm not going to get. There's got to be. Wait, hang on. Hang on a minute. There's got to be some hidden somewhere, right? Oh, there is. There's there. They're there. There's some right there. Excellent. So how do I get that? Am I overthinking this? I'm probably overthinking this. There's a very, very solid chance I'm overthinking this. But if I go there, we and then go this way, and then, go, oops, and then go this way. And then go here. How do you? So no, so I can't. I can't smash that from from this side, which is unfortunate. So there's no way I can get. Well, hang on. How do I get? There's no way I'd be able to get up there. If I go up to one of those side pieces, there's no way I'd be able to get up. Up there. I'd have to drop down. That's what I'd need to do. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see if we can't make this a thing. Which makes me think I need to go up there. But to get up there, or well, maybe I need to go down here. I don't know. Let's go. Let's see where this thing takes. This is probably. Oh, hello. What are you? Aha. Ow. That's my face. Okay, so that that goes up there, but I don't have any red red butterflies to take me up there. Okay. So I need the red butterflies from somewhere. And the only way there the only place there is red butterflies. No, I don't want to go there just yet. Is there no red butterflies up here? No. Okay. Let's have another look. Let's have one more try at getting these red butterflies out of this area. Because if we can, brilliant. That's not that's the wrong area. I'm going the wrong way. I'm 100 percent going the wrong way. So let's see if we can take these. Spoosh. Whee. So I've got you, yeah? No, as soon as I land you go away. Okay. That's, that's a sad. So let's go activate this central thing and see if that gives us any additional options because I can't see any other additional options unless I'm just being mega blind. And I'm pretty blind, don't get me wrong. I, well, I look in two different directions at once, but I try not to think I'm mega blind. Oh, hi. All right, big lad. He's a big turtle. Bobbing along. Now, is there an exit somewhere over here? No, I'm just sort of following the turtle now. Oh, no, don't leave without me. I'd like to stick with you, please. Hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going to explore. Oh, is this it? Is this us? Last stop. Spoosh. Unfortunate. I have to go down here. <laughs> turtles are so friendly. That's true. I don't think I've ever met an angry turtle in a video game. If you have met an angry turtle in a video game, let me know. What's this shiny thing here? 
nothing. It's a plant. Ah, hold me in your hand. Oh, this is the wrong hand. Got it. What's down here? Is there secrets? No, there's not. Well, there are, but not here anyway. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Even better when they have three elephants on her back. It's just turtles all the way down. <laughs> Now that I could see is anger, like that I could definitely. But maybe it isn't, maybe it's a different stage of grief. Because this one specifically goes over the different stages, doesn't it? A colour has been unlocked. Oh, okay, so denial was grey, anger was red, bargaining was green, which is why it was bargaining. You were bargaining with the little thing. Depression was blue, so that was depression. And this is acceptance. Hold B. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Oh no. Oh no, the inky depression monster's back. I gotta go, my planet needs me. And this is the bit I was saying was a bit perilous. So this is the bit that I thought, well, this isn't very lo-fi, but actually now I think about it, it, it is kinda, if that makes sense. Because, like, you can die in this bit if you're not careful. You just gotta press the button at the right time. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think now I'm seeing it more from a metaphorical point of view. And it's, I think going from, going to the stage of acceptance is probably where there's the most, going to the stage of acceptance of grief is probably where there's the most depression and the most of this this inky entity that you you find yourself surrounded by and if you're not careful like this it'll eat you up and it'll consume you but if you're careful i don't know if you do the right things at the right time no one ever tells you what the right things at the right time are you kind of just figure it out it's a little bit oh it's all getting a bit tight um it's a little bit like a point-and-click adventure game where no one tells you the rules. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I slammed into a wall and I didn't realise it. Hello. Ah, delicious bioluminescence. Oh, there's a rumble. Maybe this is the... 
you're kind of finding your way in the dark with glimmers of acceptance along the way and maybe you're going the right way and maybe you're not and you're kind of just figuring it out as you go and occasionally you'll see a guiding light and sometimes you won't and you just kind of I guess it's trusting the process you know but you still got to be careful you still got to be mindful of of that inky depression monster that's never too far out of reach you know because there when you're not expecting it it can sneak up on you I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Yeah. Love moments like that. <laughs> Big turtle boy to the rescue. I would, I'd love to know people's thoughts on what the turtle represents. Is it like the guiding light in the darkness? Is it someone who steps in as a parental figure in this situation is it i don't know is it a best friend is it someone you confide in i don't know it's it's, it's what you make of it really isn't it thank you turtle Six, six, uh, fireflies. Ah, ah, ah. That's a good one, Bruce. Resilience and strength of heart was what I interpreted as it when I played. Yeah. I don't really know what I'd uh, interpret. I'd, I'd like to think it's. It, now I'd interpret it differently. Then I'd probably determine it. Uh, I'd probably interpret it as like just determination. Like it's it's just determined to get through. It. It's it's the bit of you that wakes up in the morning and goes, "No, I've I've got this. I've absolutely this. your own you're your own best cheerleader, right?" Now I'm thinking it's you know someone to talk to, someone to help guide you through this uh kind of uh dark landscape can i climb on this i don't know if i can climb on that i can't remember how this works because i'd love to say i genuinely love to say that in my limited experience of um sort of trauma similar to the subject matter of this the, I had, you know, people around me and I had uh, professional help at the time when it happened, but I didn't. I just didn't. And that's, that's a real sad thing. And I, I kind of had to make my own way, but I then didn't have time to make my own way, if that makes sense. It makes any sense at all. Um, and I didn't really realize that until much later in life that I just sort of put a lot of stuff off. Whenever a trauma happened, whenever grief happened or anything like that, I just sort of put it to one side. And there was a part of me that was like, Oh, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Don't worry about it. I'll get to it. And eventually, I just realized I'm never getting to it. And it, I can't take on any more. Like, I can't physically fit any more troubles or strife in. And there was a, a breaking point. But I guess just a, a wild moment of self-realization that I wasn't used to. That made me realize 
you know, I needed help. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do it alone. I didn't need to, you know, but everyone's, everyone's journey is different, you know. Whee. Now, I'm not diving straight up there. I want to know if there's any secrety bits. No, there's no secrety bits. Spoosh. Oh. This, th these bits specifically remind me, and this is aging myself here, and this is a niche reference, of um, Echo the Dolphin, the, the the ocean highways in Echo the Dolphin 2. Come on, light. Show me the way. Show me the path. Do I need to bash? Yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, excellent, there it is. Um, yeah, those water highways used to annoy me. <laughs> There we go. From a mechanical side of things, this game's really got it got it right. Like at some point you realize to yourself, if I do one of the things I can do in this game, I'll find a way round. I'll find a way through. I'll find the next bit of the puzzle. I'll uh, whatever. Right. Other than the secret bits, like the secret bits are obtuse for a reason because they're supposed to be like a hidden ending. But mostly, like that bit there, I was stumbling around in the dark and I'm like, well, I can only do like t like one or two things, so I'll just do like one or two things and it will show me what I need to what I need to do. There's very little sort of moments when I'm genuinely stuck. That it's not a case of I. It's not like I am uh, stuck because it's not showing me where to go. It's just, I know where to go, I just can't do it, you know? It's not like a Metroidvania game or anything like that. It's not like I'm trying to do something, trying to get to an area I definitely can't get to yet, but it's not told me I definitely can't get to it yet. Oh, am I back at the hub? I am back at the hub. Brilliant. Beautiful. Oh, there's a big sparkly staircase up there now. <laughs> so now, I wonder how many of those. Does it tell me where. How many mementos I have? Resume. Uh, oh, challenges. Where's challenges? Oh, wow, no, there's, there's lots of challenges there. Uh, select? No. I could try and figure it out. I've got. I'm missing one here, and I'm not sure where that is. Whee. If there's a lot missing, I'm not too fussed, but I feel like we've gotten quite a lot of them. We appear to have all of those. I think this might be a... I think this might go to the actual level. Oh, maybe it doesn't. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. Oh, you're, you've now grown through that. Okay, I get it. <laughs> The environment has now changed. Uh, oh, I only got one from the turtle level. Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, that makes it that makes that decision a lot easier, doesn't it? I thought we were only missing maybe one or two, so I was going to try and mop those up. That's not a thing that's going to happen. At least not today, anyway. Perhaps if I do a uh, what I was saying earlier, if I do a a video where I just gameplay and I don't talk through it. Maybe that'll be a, a thing. Maybe I'll go through it and get the true ending for that. So I was thinking of doing a gameplay only. Oh no, that's the wrong way. I'm missing three from there as well. Wow, these must be really hidden. Um, so maybe a gameplay, a playthrough of this with me talking. So that's like what you consider to be like the, the core lo-fi gaming episode, right? That's like the, the the episode that people tune in for, um, and then you've got the the commentaryless, the no commentary gameplay of relaxing games. So you just have it on in the background. Is this blocked? 
This is blocked. I don't know why I went this way. I'm insanely stupid. <laughs> Donk. Ah, there's a uh, thing. There's things in there. I don't want to break any of the parts if I don't need to, so. Uh. Mm, there's a few here. Ah, hello. Oh, I see. You light my way. Got it. I've got another Navi. Oh, I didn't need to break anything then, I forgot. <laughs> they were already out of the jar. Oh. Could probably risk turning the gameplay volume up a bit. Oh, they fade, don't they? Oh, God. I've gone the wrong way. Oh, I'm dead. I'm not dead. <laughs> Yay. I was very, very close, though. Oh, how do I get up there? Whee. Oh, hello. It's for another memento. Got it. Thank you. Nice bit of environmental signposting there. Whee. Spaloosh. Is it this way? I don't think it's this way. I think I've, oh, I, I've got another memento though, so that's cool. Oh, what's, oh, there's a thing there. Oh, there is a thing there. Whee. So now I've got these. Now if I take myself over here, what have I got over here? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Fantastic. I was just making sure that my um, camera lights weren't too bright. It's a bit late now, i got to be honest. We've been doing this for like an hour and a half, so or like two hours or something, so... Where's my timer? Two and a half hours. Wow, that's... Holy cow, it's half past eight. Mm, right. Oh, there's lights. That's good. Sploosh. Sploosh. Uh, no sploosh. It's interesting. I don't know what this would represent. Like all of the other environments have have been kind of um, just representative of different stages of grief, and I'm not a hundred percent sure what this would represent. Maybe, maybe it's to interpret that their world is turned upside down after everything has happened. Um, it's not that it's a bad world. But everything is not quite the same, you know? 
it would be interesting to know other people's definition or other people's interpretation of it Oh, I need that other firefly with me, do I? I need you. Come with me. Come with me, Jeffrey. That's it. That's what I need. Come on. Do you only stick around for so long? Is that a thing? Do you just disappear after a few seconds? I feel like I've been waiting for a while. I won't lie. What's over here? Oh, no, okay. I go over here. Cool. <laughs> uh, okay, that's led me back to there. That's not where I wanted to be. <laughs> How do... Do I just do... Do I get rid of you like that? Oh, I get rid of you like that. Got it. I stamp to get rid of you. Understood. Very well, Jeffrey. Let's go. Let us go again. There we are. That'll take me to this one. Let's get to this one. So I'm missing two, two fireflies. Oh, the birds. They're adorable. Do you feel a little bad smashing up such a beautiful place? <laughs> I mean, I'm aware I need to, but it doesn't stop me thinking like, mm, I, I don't really, really want to do this. Like, <laughs> God, this, this landscape is beautiful. I love the bird song every now and then. That's really nice. Like, that makes me think, like, even though you've been through some dark times, like, there's still, like, beauty in the world. There's still something to look forward to. There's still joy, you know? And now we're upside down. <laughs> I think it's this way. Yeah, smashing crockery is an important part of overcoming grief. Oh, I've just missed it. <laughs> Damn, it feels good to play with some joypad. Oh. There we go. Marvellous. Oh, lovely. You've shown me the way up there. Thank you very much. Come hither. Uh, I probably want to go. Oh no, I've lost my my red arrows. Excellent. So now you can do that. I'll glide over here. Get these. Lovely. There's a nice shiny clonk. There's a nice shiny uh, firefly for me. I'm back to the central part. <coughs> Excuse me. 
<clears throat> Could have used my cough button then. That's what I've got it for. I love these birds. Like, they're so weird and so colourful and so peaceful as well. <clears throat> oh, I forgot I could swim. <laughs> I did after that entire piece. I forgot I could actually swim. Uh, right, so where am I going with these? Oh, so you just disappear the minute I leave the water. I say, I don't even need to not use you. Like, ha. Yep. Oh. You can absolutely guarantee that whichever way is you're supposed to go, I will pick the opposite way. I didn't need to do that at all. I did that a second ago as well. I'm so used to whenever I see little uh, red uh, butterflies, I'm so used to just needing to smash a vase to get them. Hop. That was a satisfying sploosh. Well, let's get you. And let's get... Oh, no, that didn't work. I thought I could try and cheese it then. Where are they? There they are. There we are. A bit of a, bit of a switcheroo there, but... through and down and another firefly lovely stuff i probably missed tons of secrets there that's probably one of the worst secret runs i think i've done but i'm okay with that right now Well, looks like someone found their voice. One of the beautiful things I love about this is it brings a lot, so much color and life to the world. <laughs> oh, there's uh, thingies there. Lovely. So nice. So I need an additional four. Which means I need... <laughs> it is beautiful, isn't it, Bruce? I need to go and explore the areas I've already been to here in order to find other, other areas. Now I've got this new power. So 
And I have this new power. I can go around and explore some of the bits I've already been to. So if we go... What's down here? I can't remember where down here is. Is this just an exit in case I got... In case I got dropped somewhere? Yeah, I think it might be. So now wherever there are empty uh, flowers or no no color or light, I'm going to start singing and bring color and light to here. And I think it's these ones that have the the um, red butterflies in, which means this is probably something interesting. No, it isn't, but there is something interesting over there. Yeah. Oh, I missed. Curse. There's one. Is this fading? I don't know if this is fading. I think this is fading. <laughs> or maybe it's not. Oh no, it is. Oh no. There we go. Oh. Is, this one? is this something? No. the game is it that reminds me of this it, that, the one with singing in it um one way of singing it, it's not like a a main mechanic but it's it's a it's a big part of it i can't remember it is. um oh man i think we found where we need to be um oh Help me, chat. You're my only hope. Um, oh, I can't remember what it, what it is now. Games that involve singing. It's, it should be, you know, the, the the topic of conversation. I can't remember what it is that I'm thinking of. You're going around like a cyberpunk-esque city. And you are trying to do something. I think you're trying to regain your memories. And I can't quite remember what the game is. It's like an isometric game. And you either had singing as an ability or you were a singer. No, it's gone. It's gone from my tiny, tiny brain. Oh, oh, I didn't miss it. I actually got it that time. There we go. Oh, I remember Transistor. That was it. Transistor was another one. Is this something I can sing to? No, it's not. Look at that beautiful nebula in the background. Oh. Wee. <laughs> I love that they, they, they flip around like little pieces of fabric. <laughs> Excuse me.
Oh, I forgot to light these flowers. This is the bit I was in a minute ago. So I wonder how many I have now. Oh. I don't think I have enough. I'm going to go back to the other side as well. I think I picked up two then. No, I'm not certain. Oh. I would make that. <laughs> Hello, beautiful tree. Oh, I nearly made it. So close. But yeah, this is one of those games that I'm just like. Originally, I didn't think it would make a very good lo fi gaming stream because of the. Um, the, the peril that you find yourself in. Uh, now I'm a bit lost as to where to go. Do I need these jobbies? Oops. I did not use them. But it does meet all the other criteria. It's beautiful, it's serene, it's everything. Aha, uh -huh. so let's try exploring that bit again. I think I went down when I didn't need to. Ah, I wonder is this. There we go. Hello, friend. It's giant spider friend. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, giant spider friend. You can stay there. Oh, you're not following, you're following me. You're not just like going where I'm standing on your back. I didn't realize you were just following me, following me. Hop. Oh, that was fortunate. Oh, where have I got now? <laughs> There is that slight moment in this game where I'm like, ah, did I mean to do that yet? I'm not 100% sure if I did. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, that does not feel... Oh, no, it is. I think that's the way I want to go. Oh, a memento. How exciting. This, uh... Oh, no. Aha. This way. Awaken a tiny, well, I say tiny, awaken ginormous scarab. Uh, how do, oh, you come back down. Good. <laughs> I was like, how do I reach this? There you go. Oh, there we go. 
while singing here. Lovely red roses. Well, not red roses. They look a little bit like dahlias. Although, fun fact uh, that, I've, that I've realized recently, it is peony season. Um, I don't know if anybody knows anything about flowers. I didn't know much about flowers, um, but it is officially peony season. I only know that because it's one of my wife's favorite flowers. So That is a random fact you can learn on stream, but when it gets to about June, July, um, maybe May, that's when places start having peonies for sale. And they are massive, beautiful flowers. Like they, they grow to like the size of your head. It really makes me want to take up gardening again. Whenever we have flowers in the house, I really want to take up gardening. I just think to myself, yeah, I could probably do that. Like I think it would be quite serene. And I think I'm at that point in my life where I'm like, I could definitely do with gardening as a hobby. Like spending some time in the garden, doing some gardening. But then I'm also very well aware that I have the attention span of a six year old. So probably not. I mean I would be impressed that I've I've got scream screaming streaming schedule uh, blocks out for like five hours in the next thirty days. But I'm just like we'll we'll see how that goes. <laughs> there you go. I've made a thing lovely. Um, yeah, speaking of which, that's tomorrow, actually. That's going to be um, an exciting an exciting uh, showcase of mini horror games. I say mini horror games, more like um, uh, indie horror games. Uh, there are some real... Uh, I've not played any of them, but I've, I've heard about some of them, and there are some real good ones there. So that links on to the other constellations. It's almost like we have made the constellation that we need in this hub world. So now I just need to be able to reach it, right? That's what we need to be able to do. Oh, no, I did not do that properly. There we go. Oh no, I still didn't do it properly. Is there another one that I can't see? Why am I going this way by default? What's going on here? No, there's nothing here. Let's turn left and do that. There we go. And our journey comes to this end and we find ourselves on the steps blocked by a horrible entity that has hounded us through our journey. twist we were the darkness all along we 
these broken shards that we've seen as we swim through this I don't know the the innards of this darkness And sometimes we find ourselves in this position, right? We find ourselves just suddenly and inexplicably in this pit of darkness. And we're just like, oh no, how did I get here? How did this happen? You know? I don't know this this bit this bit sort of hits me different I think I think because because of my mum passing away and because that's a something we've been talking about for uh, a while in my therapy sessions that yeah I just I don't know. It's one. It's one of those things, isn't it? I don't mind talking about it. I just don't know what the words are because I've never explored it. <laughs> Does that make any sense? I don't really know if that makes any sense, but like, it's hard to know how I feel about things sometimes because I've never thought about how I feel about things. And sometimes, like, growing up, it was real hard to express feelings and emotions, and it wasn't really something that was touted, and it wasn't really something. Yeah, we're never told like oh you know have you tried just not being sad or anything daft like that but it's I never had the vocabulary to get in touch with how I feel about a thing to explain to anyone uh, family, friends, wife, whatever how I felt about a thing and that's there we go and that's part of this journey that I've been on for a number of years that I'm learning how to do that slowly, piece by piece.
love that scene. I I really like that because it it kind of reminds me that no matter how much that darkness sort of rips apart what you're working on yourself, a memory, anything, that you can you can overcome it and you can resist it and yeah it's it's hard to put into words it'd be real nice though it'd be nice to to you know Gris has has just heard her mother sing to her in a moment of need and that'd be lovely you know I love I really like those the like tv shows and movies where it's like oh you get another chance to see a long departed parent or loved one and you know you get to see them as a ghost or a memory or a shadow or anything like that i'd love that i'd, I'd adore once just once would be beautiful but the truth the fact of the matter is i don't even remember it's been so long now i don't even remember what my mum's voice sounds like and that's a real shame and it's not something that i know if i'm ever going to remember and that's yeah that's but i like that i like that other people sort of have that level of remembrance and closure and i like experiencing it with them because then it makes me feel like well maybe that's how it feels maybe if i'm empathetic towards that feeling that's how it feels and that's that's a nice it's a nice feeling you know So that was Gris. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I've, I've, I've enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. I've, I've enjoyed revisiting it. I've, uh, I've enjoyed revisiting it. I've enjoyed playing it with everyone here. And yeah, it's one of those games that I think this is gonna not be a running theme. It's not all gonna be emotional, but I think this was a good game to start on because of. Uh, just everything that's, everything that's going on at the minute and yeah I think it's it's a very very beautiful game And it might not, it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I think the subject matter obviously hits me quite hard. And it'd be lovely, right? It'd, it'd be proper nice to have that last, that last voice or that last moment with them. And even if it doesn't happen, I just, I want that to be real. I want that to be a thing that happens because then is a thing that happens other people can at least experience the thing I never could and that's nice right I want other people to be able to experience that I want other people to be so connected to the memories of their loved ones that they can hear their voice or anything like that Hello, oh, Power Jade. How are you doing? I think my problem is I played Air before Gris, and that's why it didn't click me so much. That's fair enough. I've never played Air. I think it's on my list of the games to play. Mama, I'm developer says, Mama can thank you for the fact I'm going to phone home for the first time since Christmas today. I, uh. Yeah, that's fair. I, um. I regret not. I think I regret not talking to them more and like not getting to know them as as grown-ups do you know what I mean like not getting to find out who they who they were as people is something I, I regret that's hard that's hard to admit it's hard to admit to a live audience it's hard to admit to anyone but like, what were they interested in? Like, what were they interested in? What sort of people were they? Um, what were their hopes and dreams, you know? Yeah. I 
that was Gris. I enjoyed playing it. I hope you enjoyed playing it. Everything got a bit emotional at the end there. And that's that's all right. Games are a form of media. And media can let you... You know, just like books and movies and music, media can put you in touch with a certain feeling and with a certain moment in your life. And if that moment is emotional, don't shy away from it. I'm not, you know. <sighs> but yeah, that's that's Gris. And it's a, I think it's a lovely way of, of opening up the new channel of Lo-Fi Gaming. I think it's really nice that... I also think it's nice that I can talk to people about this. Even if it's, you know, I say strangely into I know a lot of people who are in my community, but I, even if I'm talking on video and on camera, I feel like that's immortalizing this feeling, right? That's, that's a thing. Anyway, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to wrap up because um, it's, it's past my, my, my go time. <laughs> And if I carry on, I'm going to be in tears more than I already am. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lo-Fi Gaming. Everything, like I said, everything got a bit emotional by the end of it. But I really appreciate you being on this journey with me. This is Gris. It's a beautiful story of a girl who loses a mother and goes through the various stages of grief. And I think everyone who has ever suffered from loss or grief should play it a couple of times and just try and pick out some of the metaphors and some of the analogies in it because they're there and it's it's interesting to see them and it's interesting to pick them up a second time playing it so so i'm gonna head on out of here um stay wonderful stay safe and i will see you in the next episode of lo-fi gaming Thank you. And for the people who are on Twitch, I hope you have an absolutely stellar weekend. That was specifically for, um, that was the YouTube bit, right? That was specifically for YouTube. You guys, uh, question results is a stranger on the internet. Appreciates that you're a great person and I'm glad to have followed you. I appreciate you following me as well. I appreciate everyone who's in this. And this is, I think I said this in a another stream a couple of days ago, that this is like one of the reasons why I share so much with people here at the minute is you guys are like the cornerstones of this community. And that that's sort of, that's really important to me, you know? It might not be important to other, other people, other content creators, but it's really important. I mean, it might be, who knows? But yeah, it means it means a lot. So, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, so, tomorrow, we've got a five-hour mega stream from 12 p.m. BST until 5 p.m. BST. So, noon until 5, where I'm going to be going through a number of indie horror games. Um, even if you don't like horror games and you want to check it out, I encourage you to check it out because obviously more people on Twitch means more uh, noticeability and more discoverability and that really helps. So if you have me have me on background, I don't really mind. Um, but after that, Monday is going to be the proper Screaming at a Joypad horror stream where we're going to be playing Spooky Scary House of Jump Scares, um, which I played a tiny bit of and I, it, it seems a bit silly. I gotta be honest, so I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing if that's got act any actual jump scares in it. So I don't think that's like a horror horror game, I think that's like a parody horror game. Um, and then, what have we got next week? I think next week, oh no, Tuesday as well, so I'm going to be online Tuesday uh, on GOG.com, so twitch.tv forward slash GOGCOM for more episodes of Salt, uh, Ghosts of Salt Marsh. Um, and then I believe i'm on on friday again for more lo-fi gaming so i'm getting more into the the rhythm of um now i've got a 30-day plan and by the end of this month i'll have another 30-day plan of uh streaming on certain days and it just happens to fall on mondays and fridays so i think mondays is going to be horror games and fridays is going to be lo-fi games which is kind of nice right and then 
one one mega stream a month and eventually that will start to become the retro mega stream but at the minute i've got so many tiny little horror games that i want to play that i'm like i keep collecting them like downloading little packages from itch.io itch that i'm just like i really want to play all of these in one stream like I, and i want to be able to do that soon so i'm kind of i'm jonesing for a horror game itch for a horror game fix so uh Right, I feel more composed now. I genuinely feel more composed. Um, and I hope everyone everyone has a wonderful evening and an absolutely fantastic weekend. And I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you following. And yeah, I'll see you when I see you. Um, if you want any more details of when I'm online, you can check out the Discord. Link should be in the chat now. Um, and I will see you when I see you. Take it easy, everyone.